Welcome, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Anna, and I'm a senior marketing specialist at the University of Tartu. And uh, I'm very happy to welcome you to the Alumni Talk 2023 event, and I will be your host today. Alumni Talks is our new series where our fantastic alumni share their stories of studying at the University of Tartu and also give a short lecture on the topic they chose. Uh, today with me, I have Ketevan. Uh, Ketevan is uh, a disability rights lawyer with eight years of experience. She graduated master's program in international law and human rights. Uh, her experience in disability rights advocacy includes strategic lit lit litigation, sorry, conducting research on disability rights related topics, revising uh, national legal acts and drafting projects for legislative changes in accordance with international human rights standards. So today her topic uh, will be disability rights advocacy. Before giving the floor uh, to Ketevan, I would like to mention a few technical things. Uh, so if you have any questions during this webinar, you're welcome to leave your question during the presentation. And you can leave the questions under the Q&A box. And then after the presentation is done, we are going to address your questions. So at the end of the webinar. Uh, so if you have any technical questions, please let us know, technical issues, please let us know as soon as possible so we can resolve them. And also this webinar is recorded. So after this webinar, you will be receiving the recording uh, together with all the related information about the webinar. So without a further ado, I would like to give a floor to Ketevan. Ketevan, please, the floor is yours and you can also share your screen. Thank you so much for the introduction and hello everyone who is participating on today's webinar. Uh, I'm going to share my presentation and I hope, yeah, it's working. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so what I'm going to do on today's webinar um, uh, and what it's about. Uh, so. Uh, briefly about myself, I will introduce who am I, what I'm doing. Uh, then I will talk about why I choose uh, University of Tartu and uh, why is, uh, Estonia is an excellent place to live and study at uh, the same time. Uh, and finally, uh, I will talk about uh, how knowledge uh, of international law and human rights system acquired at University of Tartu can boost uh, your skills uh, for human rights advocacy on, in our case, in our topics case, about disability rights advocacy. However, I want to underline that no matter you're advocating for women's rights, ch children's rights, migrants' rights, uh, it's all relevant and the program really can help you uh, with your skills and knowledge, uh, fundamentals on human rights and really increase your academic skills on human rights advocacy. So who am I? Uh, I'm graduated from University of Tartu, uh, uh, International Law and Human Rights Master's Program in 2019. Uh, after graduation, I applied uh, for uh, Open Society Foundation Scholarship about Global Disability Rights Scholarship uh, to undertake my second master's uh, degree at University of Leeds uh, on international, again, it's uh, international human rights law, but uh, on this time I was focusing uh, explicitly on disability rights and disability rights advocacy. University of Leeds is uh, famous with its um, disability studies uh, program and disability law so this was my main aim to achieve this goal and uh, further continue to study uh, how to uh, strengthen my skills, my knowledge at disability law. And uh, for now, I um, hold an offer, PhD in law uh, from University of Birmingham and looking for funding maybe 
I can uh, find a scholarship for my PhD uh, project, which as well is connected with disability uh, law. Uh, to uh, undertake my studies at University Tartu, uh, I was granted with DORA Plus scholarship and then achievement stipend by the University of Tartu. And also uh, I had a part scholarship from Georgian International Education Center for international master's scholarship. Uh, and during my study at the University of Leeds, I was awarded with Caroline Gooding Prize for contribution uh, to disability law activities, which I'm very proud of. Uh, after graduation, uh, both of my uh, diplomas uh, acquired at the University of Tartu and University of Leeds uh, really boosted my career uh, as a uh, researcher, as a lawyer, uh, and I started uh, after arrival uh, back in Georgia, I started uh, uh, work at Sulha Sabah Urbeliani University in Georgia and was uh, delivered and right now all also delivering lectures for postgraduate law students in disability uh, law. Uh, since 2015, I'm working at uh, Coalition for Independent Living. It's a uh, disabled people's organization, local organization. Uh, I'm working as a chief lawyer here and leading human rights advocacy team, uh, which um, uh, consists of disabled people, lawyers, students, and uh, activists. So, human rights um, activists. We are uh, undertaking a lot of strategic litigation cases, uh, drafting various reports for UN bodies, uh, um, uh, and uh, making research uh, about uh, human rights uh, violations in Georgia and um, uh, improvements maybe, etc. Um, after uh, graduation uh, from university, and university leads. I was also uh, invited uh, to uh, uh, draft uh, teacher's manual or Berlian University. Then I was invited by them. It was a uh, big research, uh, consisted of uh, desk research and qualitative research as well. Um, almost six months uh, I was um, working on this project uh, and it's uh, already published uh, on Public Defender's uh, website. Uh, alongside uh, with uh, mentioned, uh, I'm also involved in small projects, different projects, and one of them is a uh, project undertaken by Caritas Czech Republic in Georgia. Uh, and here, uh, my aim was to review healthcare-related law uh, through prism of uh, UN CRPD. It's a United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability and uh, the recent developments in bioethics. So our aim was um, to draft it uh, to drafting re relevant uh, legislative changes in healthcare law and make them in compliance with international standards. Uh, so uh, this is what I'm uh, basically uh, doing uh, in my life last uh, two, three years. And all this was possible only after uh, graduation from uh, European universities. So now about why I choose University of Tartu. There was a lot of option. Uh, however, my um, choice was stopped at University of Tartu and that's why. Uh, in Georgia, actually, university has a very good reputation. Uh, we have the, a lot of famous uh, people from 19, uh, even 19 century, beginning of the 20th century, uh, who we are studied in at University of Tartu. And uh, from my, since my childhood, I really heard um, a lot about university. Um, so my main focus was um, that good reputation was very important for me. Uh, 
while I was choosing the university. Um, and during uh, while I was in Tartu, actually, I understood that the university is also quite respectable among uh, um, among North European countries, when I met um, uh, disability scholars in Tallinn, actually, in 2017, uh, there was an um, event uh, about uh, disability-related uh, law. A lot of uh, scholars from uh, different uh, countries came in Estonia. Um, uh, it was an event about independent living, if I remember correctly. And when I met with these uh, scholars who are working in disability law and uh, explained uh, that I was um, studying actually human rights at University Tartu. I understood that all of them were well aware about the university and it has a, a good uh, reputation among uh, scholars from other universities as well. Uh, university of Tartu also has a rich academic history. Um, as you know, it was established uh, in uh, 1632, so several centuries, history of several uh, centuries. And and uh, also, uh, I should mention uh, affordable price uh, because to compare, if you compare uh, studying price and living price from uh, other European countries like UK, uh, France, Germany, or Netherlands, uh, Estonia is a much uh, uh, affordable and the price for the study as well is quite affordable. So um, this also was important for me while I was cho choosing the university. And when I came, uh, then I understood that uh, uh, in addition of uh, everything, uh, online system is uh, use quite user friendly and in general, I'm quite uh, sure you already familiar that uh, Estonia has a very good reputation, that it has a, the most uh, uh, like um, developed uh, e system about e governance, uh, like an um, election uh, internet uh, by uh, online. It uh, same applies to universities online system, and to compare with other university system, it's really friendly and easily navigated. So you won't spend a lot of time to understand how to uh, submit your papers, how to find any information you need uh, for. For your uh, module or for undertaking exams, etc. So everything um, works perfectly easy uh, for uh, students. Um, uh, so why program? This program is quite actually uh, comprehensive and um, interesting. Um, it uh, works for both students who are interested in international law and who are interested in specifically in human rights law as well. Um, the university has uh, excellent academic staff, um, highly qualified, friendly, very helpful. And I should mention uh, my supervisor, uh, Mary Link Kivjorg. She is an amazing person, um, very supportive. So I want to really say a lot of thanks to her uh, for the support. Uh, she is doing. Um, also, university, our program, uh, International Law and Human Rights, um, has amazing administrative staff. Uh, they are always supportive, always, always friendly, kind, and whenever you approach them, uh, you are getting uh, quite detailed uh, uh, information uh, about uh, program, about um, some administrative things, uh, and etc. So you want uh, be never disappointed with your inquiries when you are going to them and asking for something. And as I mentioned, the uh, uh, program is quite comprehensive and you can take a lot of knowledge, a lot of academic knowledge and the skills you need uh, for further the with academic development or uh, practical work, uh, whether you're working in NGO or in uh, some um, uh, private sector organization or even in governmental organization. Um, as you see, I put uh, one photo, it's uh, from 2018, and it was really a real opportunity, um, exciting opportunity when uh, our lecturer, it took us uh, to the CCDCOE. It's a NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. 
and uh, Estonia is the only country where you can visit uh, the headquarters of the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. It was really interesting trip uh, to the office, and um, we uh, learned uh, interesting um, things about how this uh, headquarter is uh, operating and uh, actually as uh, a module as well was very interesting it's about how international how international uh law is uh operating uh, on online system so it was really interesting uh, also not directly uh connected with uh, my research field disability field but still it was exciting uh to uh, to attend this course, um, and I really highly recommend it as well. Uh, okay, uh, I will talk more uh, about program a little bit uh, later, uh, but uh, uh, working and uh, studying at university is not only thing you can do in Estonia, and I really suggest uh, to see as much as you can uh, see and work across the country um, and here is some photos uh, from the places I have been um, you can see in the pictures from Tallinn, Parnu, Rakwere uh, and uh, to the right side it's in Narva uh, it's a border of Russian Estonian it's very for me it was very interesting place and to the left side you can see Viruraba uh, it's amazing uh, uh, spectacular um, place, uh, especially in autumn, it's very beautiful. So I really uh, recommend if you will study in Estonia, uh, September, late September, October would be a great uh, time to visit uh, Viru Raba. Uh, also, uh, my favorite thing in Estonia, uh, after studying, of uh, it's about everything about mushrooms. It's really mushroom paradise. So if you love, like mushrooms, uh, you can uh, go and find a lot of them. Uh, but be careful. Many of them. Uh, uh, it's better if you will go with some local uh, people uh, because you might be uh, not familiar. Uh, with uh, local mushroom uh, <laughs> mushroom so uh, I did highly recommend to try collecting mushrooms and then doing some uh, good food with it uh, also what you can do in while you're studying in Estonia and why I love the country it's uh, about uh, easy to travel to other you stay it's well connected uh, to Helsinki, Stockholm, um, uh, Sweden, Finland, uh, easy to uh, to travel, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Germany, all of them really easily connected and you really should not uh, like waste your time while you are in Estonia. You can visit all these uh, countries and cities as well or even uh, take uh, some um, hiking trip uh, in uh, Finland for one of them in the middle actually it's a uh, hiking place in uh, uh, nearby Helsinki uh, so you can do this one as well okay now back to the uh, back to the module uh, uh, which I undertook during my studies at University of um, Tartu and how you choose uh, carefully your modules, what you want to study, how what, what kind of skills you want to develop for your research. And all of them are interconnected and you really can do your best and uh, wisely choose uh, modules uh, to support, uh, to advance your knowledge in human rights uh, even if it's not directly connected international human rights law uh, still i think public international law it's a, one of the module which you can take uh, during the studies uh, you can learn about general operation of international law which includes a human rights system 
Actually, my aim was, um, uh, I was uh, working at disability rights organization uh, before going and, uh, in university. And what I understood is that without having this solid academic knowledge, how international law operates and how human rights system uh, is operates under international law, uh, it was really hard for me uh, to make a good uh, complaints, to make a good uh, researches, uh, and to make a good reports in front of UN bodies. Uh, um, uh, so I really needed this solid and good broad understanding. What, what is the international law? How its system is built? And how you can um, uh, really interpret each norm uh, which is written in international uh, human rights treaties. Uh, even if you have a good practice, still this academic knowledge, what which you can get gain from University of Tartu is really priceless because it gives you a lot of tips uh, of uh, high quality understanding, interpreting uh, uh, a lot of international norms and how one or another treaty works, uh, how the human rights norms are interrelated with, with uh, with another. Um, so my uh, suggestion is to take uh, this module on public international law so you will understand how uh, the international law works in general and we are human rights system stands. Uh, of course, international human rights law uh, is a specific uh, subject specific module uh, you can uh, learn during this uh, module uh, main concepts what are dignity, equality, proportionality, subsidiarity, implementation of uh, human rights at uh, international and uh, national levels, uh, what are the main obstacles uh, for implementation at national levels, uh, what, what can you do to foster implementation of human rights norm at your country, uh, you also uh, learn deeper uh, what is a prohibi prohibition of torture, right to a fair trial, freedom of expression, uh, private life um, and family life, etc. Um, even if you're working at the human rights field, and I was working in human rights field uh, before coming in Estonia, still um, uh, you will uh, take a lot of academic knowledge and without this knowledge, um, I now uh, from retro retrospective, I understand that without it, it was really uh, low quality uh, from my side to undertake um, researches, reports and litigation in human rights. Uh, one uh, additional internet, um, interesting uh, module was about comparative human rights law. Uh, it was uh, also uh, quite a, uh, supportive uh, for advancement, my knowledge and my skills on uh, the interpretation and reading actually uh, a lot of judgments from different legal systems, different jurisdictions, for example, how to compare uh, USA uh, Supreme Court uh, uh, judgments uh, with UK judgments or uh, island, uh, how, uh, what is the view of island courts uh, on different controversial issues on in human rights law. So you will uh, really uh, closely um, analyze all these uh, controversial uh, judgments in controversial uh, human rights law issues, which gonna help uh, at your hometown uh, during litigation. I'm using all of this knowledge um, uh, on my liti strategy, strat strategic litigation process. Um, uh, there is uh, uh, one subject about human rights and transitional justice, and this subject is um, going to be interested uh, to uh, people who are you know, like from post-Soviet countries or from countries um, Oh, yeah, a huge widespread human rights violation uh, was happening right now or happened uh, recent past. So you will uh, gain knowledge uh, how um, should be addressed this widespread human rights violation in, in the context of authoritarian, when authoritarian regime changes. 
And uh, so even for me, it was really interesting to understand what, for example, Georgia uh, did wrongly or how it could be better to do after the Soviet uh, regime uh, was changed uh, with democratic uh, governments. Uh, one, uh, uh, I suggest also, and uh, if I correctly remember, it's um, optional. It's not an optional subject. It's research and academic writing skills. It's also unique uh, module, I think, uh, because uh, it really helps you uh, to uh, understand how you should select topic, how you can interact with a lot of databases, how you can find the proper sources, uh, uh, how to formulate research research questions, uh, how to develop a problem statement, uh, um, uh, also what is a plagiarism, how, how how you can avoid it, uh, how you make uh, uh, proper footnotes and references. It's a very important part during uh, academic writing. So uh, why I'm talking about all this module in the uh, more uh, detailed way, because all these uh, uh, modules, all these subjects will contribute to your research, legal writing skills, and no matter you are interested in disability rights, women's rights, migrants' rights, or any other rights, because if you're working in human rights fields, uh, any kind of skill which is which you are taking from university tato is really beneficial for you it really contributes uh, contributes to your um, skills to your development so um you really can uh, have this uh, wider perspective on human rights um, issues uh, uh i did not mention uh, a lot of uh, modules uh, on about international law, you can, if you're interested in international law in general, it's really perfect and, and a lot of options. And you can uh, choose um, law of the sea, uh, philosophy of international law, um, what are the Russian approaches to international law. I will, as well took this subject, but it was not directly connected with my research field. But as I'm really interested in Russian approaches to international law, um, I learned a lot uh, from the subject at first. You can also take uh, human rights and education um, and uh, more other subjects uh, on international law. Uh, there is also models about uh, general how in, in, international institutions are working. It's a quite a, a huge volume of uh, uh, study, but I, I can't name any of modules which are less interested, or you can take a lot of things and it's not helpful uh, to you uh, to improve your skills and knowledge about international law and um, uh, human rights. Uh, okay. And what about disability and why I'm interested in this field? Um, uh, one, more than 1.3 billion people, uh, it's 16% uh, of global population, uh, experience a significant di uh, disability. Uh, this uh, uh, figure was taken from the uh, WHO report. It's the newest report. And uh, as you see, it's quite a lot, quite a shocking uh, number, and it means that a lot of people are experience disability and uh, uh, it's really beneficial to uh, work in this field. Uh, you really can, if you are really interested in human rights, you can really support a lot of people you know, with your proper understanding of what is a disability and uh, how they have been marginalized, um, historically excluded from society, uh, education, employment. Uh, um, uh, there is a, still a lot of stigma and stereotypes towards um, disability and disabled people. Uh, for example, people are thinking that uh, disabled people cannot work full time time uh, that leaks uh, don't work as you see i include the photo uh, about uh, how 
outdated approaches uh, towards disability uh, are portraying uh, who are disabled people, that they have a special needs, uh, that they need medication. And um, this was called, called medical model, individual model of disability. And now it's uh, uh, perceived as the outdated model of disability. Mm, and uh, while uh, and when you are starting to work in disability fields, you are understanding that how many stigma and stereotypes uh, uh, still exist in society and uh, how you should overcome it. Um, after 19th and 17th, uh, independent living movement movement started in United States. Uh, at the same time, uh, a social model of disability, UNIK, emerged. And what is about? Um, it's about uh, changing attitudes, changing uh, views, uh, who are disabled people and how we should view them. So these movements, independent living movement and social model of disability, uh, try to recon uh, reconceptualize uh, uh, approaches toward disability. And while medical model, uh, the photo which I showed right now, uh, while medical model was viewing disability as a problem, individual problem, the problem of disabled person, social model of disability uh, stressed that problem is not person, but problem is the barriers in society. Uh, for example, physical and environmental bar barriers, attitudinal barriers, uh, which are coming from society, institutional and organizational barriers, uh, information and communication barriers. So if you are removable all the barriers, then uh, the same person are no longer in need of uh, be excluded from the society. Uh, so why I uh, decided to mention these approaches because uh, without uh, having a proper uh, uh, proper theoretical understanding how should view disability uh, for human rights lawyer. It's really hard to uh, find where uh, the problem lies in uh, the law, where the uh, problem lies in the policy documents, and how we change it. Um, so when uh, independent movement and social model of disability started emerging in UK and United States, it spread across the world. And then uh, also after uh, disability, disabled people's movement started to advocate their rights in front of United Nations bodies, then uh, disability uh, disability rela related declarations emerged into the, at the United uh, Nations system. For example, in 1971, Declaration on the Rights of Mentally Retarded Persons was adopted by the uh, United Nations uh, uh, General Assembly. Then in 1975, uh, was adopted um, the Prevention of and rehabilitation. Uh, and then later in 1993, standard rules on the equalization of opportunities for persons with disabilities. Uh, even uh, in 19, uh, even 1981, was uh, General Assembly proclaimed this year as an international year of disabled persons. All this development uh, was uh, like uh, uh, all this development. Uh, led to the adoption of the uh, United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with disability, Disabilities in 2006. And uh, this is a very interesting international human rights treaty. And to be honest, without uh, all my knowledge, which I acquired in Tartu University, it would be really different. Uh, it would be a very difficult to understand why it's so unique and how it works and um, what novelty it brought uh, to international human rights system. And uh, I always, uh, even during uh, my lecturing at uh, Georgian University, I always stressing uh, the importance of knowledge, wider international law, because otherwise it really uh, would not would not be never so understandable how each norm is wo working um, at international or at national level. So 
Actually, the uh, convention, the UNCRPD, is the first human rights convention of 21st century and first legally binding instrument with comprehensive protection of the rights of persons with disabilities. And I uh, took this uh, photo from um, United Nations website. Uh, and as you see, uh, 185 countries uh, already ratified um, the convention and uh, it's a uh, dark blue color, if you see, and uh, it's almost has universal co coverage and um, it's really real when uh, uh, Human Rights Treaty entered force after two years of its adoption. Uh, the aim of the CRPD, it's a abbreviation from the convention, uh, the aim of the CRPD is to promote, protect, and ensure the full and equal enjoyment of all human rights and fundamental freedoms by all persons with disabilities and to respect for their inherent dignity. And dignity is a, a really uh, co concept uh, in uh, UNCRPD. And while you are studying uh, at University Tartu and taking uh, human rights law module, you re will really learn a lot what is dignity, how it was portrayed in other human rights treaties, how it's interpreted by the uh, various uh, regional courts, uh, and uh, finally then you can compare how it was enshrined in uh, CRPD and how the concept was um, uh, regained the wider understanding and uh, wider con connotation. Uh, so that's why I'm always saying that it's really Really fascinating to know how other treaties uh, approaching uh, different concepts and how it's re-emerged in uh, CRPD. Uh, uh, besides uh, CRPD itself convention, the same day was adopted optional protocol to the convention on the rights of uh, persons with disabilities. And now, as you see, uh, less countries have ratified it uh, and uh, more countries have taken no action towards the ratification of optional protocol. And I will talk why it's important um, and uh, what uh, for what this optional protocol exists. Exists. So when a uh, convention was adopted and uh, optional or protocol, it also includes the uh, norm about uh, establishment of the CRPD committee. And this committee was established in 2008. It consists of 18 experts. And um, the aim of this committee is to uh, monitor and implement the CRPD by the state part parties at national and international levels. So if your country ratified the CRPD, uh, after the ratification, uh, it's an obligation. The state parties submit regular reports to the committee on how rights protected by the CRPD in their respective countries and how they are um, the first is in two years of ratifying the CRPD and after every four years. Uh, the CRPD committee examines each report and makes recommendations on how to improve human rights, uh, uh, human rights of disabled persons in your country. Uh, as a human rights lawyer or activist or even student, uh, what you can do is to, uh, to collaborate with civil society, NGO or uh, organization with persons with disabilities to submit their alternative reports. Uh, for example, uh, for me, it's uh, interesting that uh, on March, uh, after two months, actually, uh, the CRPD committee is going to uh, examine a Georgian report on the implementation of the rights of persons with disabilities. And uh, Georgia submitted a lot of alternative reports. And right now we are working as well uh, to update this report. And uh, uh, civil society is uh, going to participate uh, on um, March, uh, during the session, we are Georgia's uh, 
uh, report will be examined. Uh, it looks like with Georgia, if you are from Ang Angola, Argent Argentina, Peru, Togo, or Tunisia, your reports uh, will be uh, as well uh, reviewed by the uh, committee. And I also uh, uh, put it here, uh, which countries will be uh, under the consideration uh, during the September session, it's uh, Austria, Germany, Israel, Malawi, Mauritania, Mongolia, Paraguay, and Andorra. Uh, if your country ratifies the optional protocol of the CRPD, I mentioned already, then you have more option uh, to engage in disability uh, rights advocacy. Uh, on this uh, case, if your country ratifies the optional protocol, you can uh, you can send uh, individual complaint or communication on human rights violation to the CRPD committee, and the committee uh, will uh, consider it and uh, will tell whether your country violated uh, human right of disabled person or not. Uh, but you can uh, study at university at Tartu and how it can um, uh, contribute to your understanding. Uh, which one is better to pick, uh, to apply to the CRPD committee for the consideration or apply to the Inter-American Court of Human Rights or African Commission on Human Rights or European Court of Human Rights? Uh, I won't answer uh, to this question because um, these are what you can uh, learn at University of Tartu and uh, uh, you will really have a good, solid understanding uh, uh, what are international, what for are international courts, and what you can achieve in international courts, and what you can achieve uh, in UN uh, treaty bodies such as the CRPD Committee, on Human Rights Committee, or CEDAW Committee, and uh, so forth. Um, uh, also, you can engage uh, uh, as a disability rights advocate um, uh, with a committee on the rights of persons with disabilities uh, through your uh, NGO, maybe. Uh, you can uh, uh, ask committee, uh, you can give an information to the committee that in your country there is a grave and systematic violation of the convention, and the committee decides that uh, they should come in your country, uh, visit and uh, start, um, undertake a study about um, grave or systematic violation of the convention, then they will write a report about this violation, and it also be a, a good ground uh, to further uh, advocate, advocating uh, for improving human rights of disabled uh, people. Uh, so um, this is a small introduction about uh, human rights, uh, um, MA International Law and Human Rights at University of Tar Tartu, and a really small introduction about uh, the advocacy and improving uh, the human rights of disabled people in your country. But if you have uh, other question or you want to know more about disability rights advocacy, as I see, uh, there, is, uh, there are questions in Q&A. Uh, so we can uh, now answer these questions. Thank you so much, Ketevan, for your uh, very interesting talk. Uh, I guess uh, your research is the exact example how international law is uh, connected to human rights. Uh, so right now uh, you can stop sharing your screen and we can move to our Q&A session. Uh, we have quite some questions. Um, Okay, first question. Did the academic staff have good English? Trust me, they have much better English than I do. Uh, you really can't uh, make any difference. Uh, they have all undertaken their PhDs in UK universities, so they are, they, the English is really excellent, not like mine. So <laughs> don't think that any difficulties will be with uh, English. You have perfect English. You underestimate your proficiency. <laughs> All right, let's move to the next question. Uh, did some of your course mates stay in Estonia? Where did they find work uh, in the field of international law? 
uh, can you repeat where they can find the work? At the... Where did they find work in the field in the in, in the field of the international law? Uh, okay, uh, I was not working actually uh, during my studies because my studies was funded and uh, I needed to take uh, best results in terms of make uh, it was uh, written on my contract so I could not work. Uh, but I had an internship, it uh, was obligatory to take an internship and I found uh, uh, local, uh, it, actually it's not a local, it's a private uh, legal organization uh, and uh, I undertook internship as a researcher and I, um, so organization, uh, this private organization, law organization was requesting uh, researches around the international law. I was making this research and sending them uh, this is my input and with me as well, some other students, uh, we are doing the same internship. So I think it was quite interesting to work uh, uh, with international students and uh, undertaking researches. Uh, uh, as I remember, I, during the six months, I undertook 11 different uh, small research about 11 different topics on international law. So for me, it's always interesting to be involved in the research project so, and the research process. So for me, it was really interesting. Uh, also to work with um, uh, Estonian organization, it was an interesting experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. What about your course mates? Did they stay in Estonia? Did they find a job in Estonia? Or in which field they are working currently? Uh, so I don't have a connection with all of them, uh, but uh, half of them I still have a good connection. And uh, I can say that sometimes I think that I'm the only one person who came back, actually. Uh, most of them are still in Estonia. Mm, some of them are working. Some of them went actually in other universities to making their PhDs. So I'm really proud of my course mates. They did really well and they are still doing very well. Uh, two of them, as I know, are working in, in Estonian private law organizations and etc. So still, I'm the, I, I still think that I'm the only one who left the country. <laughs> I, uh, there is one question which is related, actually, uh, to the fact that you left Estonia. Why did you decide to leave Estonia? Do you see yourself coming back someday? Okay. Uh, it was a really big question for me. Uh, I also was thinking to stay in Estonia. However, uh, because of my work, I still think that I'm, my work is more beneficial in Georgia uh, because I know the country context and when you're a human rights advocate and especially in disability fields, uh, I still think that I can do more for Georgian disability communities than I could do in Estonia because of language barrier. That was my main reason. And also I needed to go in UK to make um, undertake my another master's and afterwards I came back in Georgia and what I'm doing here, I really convinced that I did a good thing that I came here because I'm involved in a lot of projects. I also lecturing about in disability law for Georgian postgraduates, law students, which I, I think I would never do in Estonia. <laughs> so it really de uh, uh, depends on what you are doing in your life and uh, where you can do better or contribute to the society and community. So if you're interested in human rights, uh, probably you, aim is to do the best for community somewhere. So I think that in Georgia, I'm doing my best for advancing human rights, uh, to helping advance human rights of persons with disabilities. This is very nice so what you're doing. Thank you so much. Um, the next question, what are some interesting facts about disability rights that people might find surprising? Uh, to be honest, it's already nine years I'm working in disability fields and every time I'm excited and each time I'm reading something, uh, I feel that it's something new and uh, you can make a lot of research. Uh, so the first thing is that uh, disability law is comparatively new uh, to compare with other human rights like women's rights, children's rights, um, or 
some other international law fields like uh, law of the sea is a really old field of the international law uh, and uh, but disability law is really new. Uh, few people are really uh, into the uh, field. Uh, and every time you're engaging, you see that uh, disability, the convention CRPD uh, really changed the perspective on human rights. This is my main point uh, because it's a, a latest uh, human rights. It has the latest developments and it is the only convention where more than 500 disabled persons we are involved during the negotiation process. So it's really fascinating, fascinating in a lot of terms. Um, so I, if someone is still thinking what to do, I really suggest to take a close look into the convention and how what, what the convention is of. And even uh, traditional understanding, for example, about the right to fair trail or accessibility or access to something, it's everything we are uh, renewed by the CRPD. And you see the differences and you see how the human rights are evolving during the, uh, how society is changing, the human rights are evolving and changing it. it its understanding. So it's really fascinating to engage in such a non-static uh, field of the human rights. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have any tips for current or future law students uh, on what uh, to think or what to do while studying to become a good lawyer? First of all, I think you should know what you what you feel. Uh, for me, feelings and love and uh, interest interest is the most important thing so if you like something and if if you feel in your heart so you will do everything to advance your ability your knowledge and to contribute uh, to society to something uh, and uh, you never should uh, look others you should just have your aim and follow you your dreams and uh, i think with hard working uh, reading uh, uh, be open and don't be afraid to novelty it's everything all together so you can achieve everything what you need actually thank you for the great tips uh, okay let's take this question do you think disability law in estonia should get more attention what can you say about it mm, interesting question <laughs> uh yes um uh so i i should think about it Okay, I don't think that disability law is famous in Estonia, uh, or it has, a, how to say, uh, as much uh, attention as it has in Georgia, actually. Uh, and uh, I don't know why it is. Uh, but however, I think uh, a lot of things can be done uh, in terms of disability law, uh, because uh, two years ago, when I was already moved in UK and doing my uh, LLM in international law, we were actually discussing um, uh, Estonia's developments on um, uh, the village of uh, from for autistic uh, children, and uh, it was really against the CRPD. Also, all institutions which are existing in Estonia, it's also against the CRPD. So um, I think uh, a lot of things in terms of human rights perspective can be done in Estonia uh, to change uh, to change the attitudes. Uh, I had uh, uh, several interviews from uh, people working in. Uh, Finland and Sweden on disability rights. And I think it's the same happening in uh, Estonia as well. So they have a lot of services, but they don't have this dignity and understanding of human rights approach towards the disability. So that's what I'm saying that yes, in Estonia, you have much services than we have in Georgia, but perspectives and approaches from human standards point, I think it's much advanced in Georgia, for example, in Estonia. It's my own, my, my point of view, so I'm not saying that it's true, but it's just my point of view. Yeah, definitely. That's your opinion. I guess, unfortunately, we have to wrap up our webinar because we are running out of time. 
uh, but we are definitely going to have a follow-up email with the recording. So in case there are some questions left, you can also uh, directly ask these questions from Ketevan. Also, if you're interested in, in master programs in international law and human rights, the application process is already has already started and you can apply before March 15. So don't forget to submit your application in time. If you have any questions regarding the program, we are going to host virtual meetings with program directors. So uh, we are going to send you the information about it and you are very welcome to join also together with the recording, of course. And uh, thank you so much from my side. Thank you so much, uh, Ketevan, for such, a, such an interesting talk and answering the questions. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And uh, I hope to see you one day in Tallinn or Tartu. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you everyone who was attending this webinar. I hope it was interesting or useful for you.